Hey, welcome back to my YouTube. It is Douglas James. I got a fresh update in the crypto space. Hey, what's been going on in the last few weeks? It's been crazy, right? So we got top stories, including MasterCard and Binance teaming up to deliver a crypto rewards card in Brazil and the city of Seoul in South Korea launching its very own metaverse for residents. We also got some economic news, market optics and additional crypto news and adoption stories to cover as well. All right, so like always, give me a thumbs up, smash that like button, and also subscribe for regular content. I got videos coming out all the time around business, financial literacy, leadership. We talk about marketing, the economy, and crypto, covering it all, helping you get closer to what matters to you. And before I get into it, I just wanna remind you, look, I am not a financial advisor or licensed financial specialist. You should always do your own diligence and research before you buy any crypto or any kind of asset class. So these videos, I do make them for entertainment and educational purposes. So now that we got that out the way, let's get right into it so right out the gate let's start with MasterCard and Binance teaming up in Brazil so MasterCard as the second largest payment processor corporation in the world and sustaining a 357 billion dollar market cap continues to make advancements with crypto technology the payments conglomerate has teamed up with a global crypto frontrunner Binance to launch a prepaid crypto rewards card for customers in Brazil. Binance users will have the capability of making purchases and paying bills with cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin within MasterCard's network of 90 million merchants. In addition, cardholders can earn up to 8% crypto cash back rewards on eligible purchases. Brazil will be the second Latin American country after Argentina where this card has been made available. Integration of cryptocurrencies with payments is an essential part of the future and this accelerating space persists with steady incorporation into financial systems across the world. Second story, we got Seoul launching a metaverse. The East Asian city of Seoul in South Korea has launched its very own metaverse for the city's residents. The government of Seoul has commenced the first phase of a virtual world called Metaverse Seoul, an exact replica of the country's capital city. This initiative's goal is to improve public services for citizens by allowing virtual visitation access to city offices for official document or tax inquiries, among other services, and will even include access to landmark attractions and destinations throughout the city. A second phase is planned in the future to make the virtual world more accessible to senior citizens, with Metaverse Seoul anticipated to be entirely completed by 2026. This project is an intriguing creative way to leverage crypto technology for the benefit of people anywhere in the world. The possibilities that can materialize from the crypto space seems endless. Now let's talk about the economy. So we got producer price index. The PPI is a measurement of the average change in selling prices collected by domestic producers of goods and services. It is a metric from the perspective of the producer, not the consumer like with the consumer price index. The unadjusted change in final demand for 12 months at the end of this part of December was 6.2%. It declined from 10% at the end of 2021. Therefore, consumers are starting to pay less for goods and services, but this also signals an economic slowdown. A cooling economy has been anticipated with the Fed rate hikes. So this PPI data further supports this expectation. Now we got national debt. So the U.S. national debt has recently reached its existing borrowing cap of $31.4 trillion. The Treasury Secretary has suggested that the U.S. obligations can be met until early June. Therefore, discussions about raising the debt ceiling have already exuded and are probably to extend into the coming months by political opposition, theatrics, and disagreements are already at the forefront of the issue. If the U.S. defaults on its debts, catastrophic economic consequences can be expected nationally and globally since the U.S. debt is valued as the bedrock of the global financial system. Now let's talk about job layoffs. All right, so this is a key metric. The new year has rung in massive layoffs among some of the largest corporations. Google has cut 12,000 jobs, Microsoft 10,000, and Amazon 18,000. Other companies that have cut in the month of January include Goldman Sachs, BlackRock, Coinbase, and Bed Bath & Beyond. Many big name companies that have been slashing employees left and right these last few months as profits dropped in Q4 and economic conditions continue to be uncertain. The unemployment rate in this new year will be given a key metric to examine given so many job losses. Now, this is just my humble opinion with these job layoffs. Look, 
job security is a facade, you know? So I always coach and teach people and recommend, hey, you should be looking for a side hustle or looking for an online business or some way to create income for yourself and for your family because job security just does not exist, right? So getting into something online or investing in this, in, into an opportunity to learn new skills is gonna be very important, I think, in 2023. So make sure that you're always doing your own due diligence and looking at opportunities so that you can get ahead all this economic data and updates that's coming out with these job losses. Now we got gross domestic product. The advanced estimate for quarter four's GDP came in at a positive 2.9%. So the second half of 2022 recorded two consecutive positive GDP values after two negative quarters early in the year. GDP in this new year will be critical for ascertaining the status of the economy. Now we got Fed rate hikes. So the Fed in their most recent meeting increased interest rates by 25 basis points, making the rate range from 4.5 to 4.75%. Jerome Powell is pleased with the pace of reduction in inflation, but would like to see much more evidence that CPI data will continue downward. Current rates are the highest seen since October of 2007 and are shrieking closely towards some of the highest levels seen since the 1980s. All right, so unemployment rate. All right, so we got some unemployment data here. The unemployment rate at the end of January dropped slightly to 3.4%, finally breaking down from continuing fluctuations between 3.5 and 3.7% for almost a year. A large boost of new employment came in as well with 517,000 new jobs added. So despite massive layoffs, people are finding new jobs pretty quick. But again, these metrics must be monitored closely in the coming months. All right, so here's some market metrics with crypto adoption. Bitcoin has been bouncing around between this 22,000 and 24,000 range. It's looking really, really solid. We also got Ethereum bouncing between 1,500 to almost 1,700 bucks. And we got BNB maintaining above $300. And we got a total market cap in the crypto space of over $1 trillion, looking really, really strong. So on to other news, the US House creates cryptocurrency subcommittee. So the new Congressional Subcommittee on Digital Assets, Financial Technology, and Inclusion in the House of Representatives is the very first of its kind to be initiated in the US. It will provide digital currency rules to federal regulators while promoting and strengthening diversity and inclusion of digital financial technology. The subcommittee's chairman considers it their responsibility to embrace emerging fintech innovations so that it may thrive safely and efficiently within the United States. The US is in great need of established crypto regulations, so it's encouraging to see progress and efforts from Congress. Now we got Australian bank introducing a stablecoin. So National Australian bank plans to launch a stablecoin on Ethereum and Algorand blockchains that will be backed by the Australian dollar. This bank is the second of four major banks in Australia to establish a stablecoin. As the country of Australia itself is committed to modernizing its regulatory framework and financial system with an establishment multi-year cryptocurrency regulation blueprint in order to acclimate to these emerging innovations. Stablecoins are not CBDCs or central bank and digital currencies. Therefore, it advances crypto dollars option in the financial industries when banks embrace stable coins instead of CBDCs. So Bitcoin mining network boom. So the Bitcoin mining network has been healthy and flourishing the last few weeks with ongoing new all time highs of hash rate and difficulty. The increases in these two metrics indicates that miners are enthusiastic and diligently mining given the recent bullish market trends. Miner holding is also at a one year low indicating that miners are cashing in to cover costs and earn profits. Now we got the guard ecosystem. So NightSwap integrates with Chainlink. This is massive. So NightSwap DEX has integrated Chainlink's verifiable random function or VRF in order to strengthen their raffle system. This top 21 market cap cryptos VRF generator provides a verifiable source of randomness to assure participants that the raffles are transparent and tamper proof. Now the Guardian Academy giveaway. So the Guardian Academy is considering a giveaway of an exclusive collectible canvas print featuring a light shaded wolf and dark shaded wolf in a circular moon pattern. Other rewards of various NFTs will also include in the raffle reward pot. And TGA members can earn entries through medallion farming. 
right? So now we got a Wolfish celebration. The next IRL event is coming up this month in Scottsdale, Arizona, and only Wolfpup holders can receive official invites. Wolfpup holders must connect their wallets to the Gray Wolf Summit page to uncover a Wolfish celebration. As I continue to see with the Guard ecosystem, they're doing a lot with their community. You know, it's not so much about the project. Obviously, they're doing and building tons of innovation, but what I continue to see with this ecosystem is the community, the people that are behind it, that are driving it and driving the fundamentals as well. So we're gonna keep a very close eye on the Guard ecosystem as they continue to grow. I'm also gonna be attending this event in February and I hope to see you there. And that's all the news for today. Thank you all so much for watching. If you liked the video, be sure to smash that like button and subscribe if you haven't already with notifications turned on. You don't wanna miss out on all the videos that I'm coming out around business, financial literacy and leadership. Hey, I hope to see you again. My name is Douglas James. Have an awesome day and I'll see you in my next video. Thank you